In 1988, Todd McFarlane started his run on The Amazing Spider-Man and would run for 28 issues in total. The McSpidey Chronicles is my attempt to review every one of those issues and a little bit more past that. It is a subsite of PipelineComics.com. You can find it at PipelineComics.com slash McSpidey, or if you're on the main page at Pipeline Comics, there's a big button in the sidebar. You can get to it from there. We are past the halfway point now on the McSpidey Chronicle, so I thought I'd take a little look back and see what the current status of it is and, and how it's going and what the numbers look like. This was supposed to be a simple project. I originally wrote the McSpidey Chronicles while doing my column at CBR back in 2014, I want to say it is. I think I had just gotten the omnibus edition of David McAlhinney and Todd McFarlane's Amazing Spider-Man and, you know, wanted to read it and write all about it. There were still, I think at that point, a couple of issues I hadn't read yet of that run. So over the course of a few months, I wrote reviews of every issue, did some drawings for it, published all those, and that was that. Last year, I thought it'd be fun to bring those articles back to put it on my own website. So I went back, found all the original text, got all the original images I had put together for the project, and started to create this new little sub website to house them all on and it was going to be a simple project relatively speaking cut and paste all the stuff in reformat here and there you know make whatever corrections i find along the way add a couple headers just to make it look a little neater and more modern all those kinds of things publish it and forget it it didn't quite work out that way my 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 standards have changed in the last uh, seven or eight years, and what I want on my website was something more. I wanted a, a resource, if you will, for all this stuff. I didn't want to just copy and paste all the reviews. I wanted to think about them again. I wanted to add more stuff to them. I wanted to have separate sections for all the hidden Felixes inside the comics and all the hidden spiders on the covers of the comics, for example. I did some more research. I had listened to a whole bunch of Todd McFarlane interviews, uh, videos. Jim Salakrup had done some podcasts recently, so I got to listen to all those. Read through a bunch of old magazines. I have a lot of Todd McFarlane magazine interviews from the early image and his later Marvel days. Most of them were pertaining to his adjectiveless Spider-Man, but you still learn bits and pieces here as you go. So I thought it'd be fun to put all this together and expand it a little bit, add a little bit more. And what's happened is I've ended up rewriting every review as I get to every issue. Very little, eh, I shouldn't say very little, it changes from issue to issue, but most of every review is now newly written. And that's why it's taken so long to finish. When I started this project back in October, and I think I first published it in November, if I remember correctly, I thought it would take a month, maybe two months to put it all together. And here we are in the middle of March, and I'm 15 issues in out of the 28. I'm working on one right now that hopefully, I can't guarantee it'll be out this weekend. It might be out early next week, but it's still coming. Don't worry. I haven't forgotten it. I'm still working on it. Work is being done. It just became a larger project than I thought it would, but I think it's more interesting this way, and I think in the end, I will have that resource that I wanted. I will have this mini website that reviews this body of work from a a fresh perspective, what, 30 years later now, which is kind of crazy to think about too. And it is somewhat personal to me because my first comic book, we'll get to this eventually, was Amazing Spider-Man number 318. So I came in as a McFarlane Spider-Man baby, and to this day, it's still the image I have in my mind when I think about Spider-Man. It's been a lot of fun. It's just taken a lot more work than I thought. There are more than just reviews on the website, of course. I do have an article in there I have to update now that's about how you can read the book digitally if you want, where where to find those issues, those collections, which versions of the collections should you buy, all that kind of stuff. And now that Comixology is effectively gone. As a store, it is gone. I have to update all that stuff to indicate it's merely an Amazon property now. And I have a couple of other resources I'm going to do. Once all the reviews are done, I want to do a compilation. I want to have one article that just has maybe a table to show you where all the hidden Felixes were. Another article to show you where all the spiders on the cover, on the covers of all these issues were. All that kind of stuff. The kind of thing that, you know, I kind of wish I had back in the early days. Now, there was an amazing Heroes interview, I think it was, that had the list of all the hidden Felixes. 
but those were all based on page numbers from the original comics. And if you're reading this digitally or through the Omnibus edition, those page numbers don't make sense anymore. So, you know, I'm finding them myself. I'm cross-checking with that original write-up. And I'll, of course, give credit to the author when I write that article. But there's more work involved. There's always more work, no matter what you do. In the end, I hope it is an evergreen resource. I hope it's the kind of thing that stands the test of time and that people will find here and there as they go along in the years to come. And that's part of the reason why the reviews aren't dated. If you look on the front page, if you look on PipelineComics.com, every article on the front page there has you know the title, a little, bl- bl- little blurb about it, but also the date of when it was published. I don't have those publication dates on the front page of the McSpidey Chronicles. I think they're there in the articles and the reviews themselves, but I try to think of this as being a more timeless thing, and I don't want to put a date on it necessarily. I'm trying to write these things in a way that doesn't give away when they were written. That's all part of the the job here. So just a few numbers for you as we go along here, Uh, because I have these numbers, and I don't know, I'm a stats nerd. I have 46 articles in progress for this website. Yes, 28 issues and 46 articles. By the time I'm done with this site, uh, I don't know if all 46 will get published. I think there's a couple of drafts in there of things, ideas I started that I probably won't finish, but there will be at least 40 articles altogether. Uh, 22 of them right now are published. If you're looking for word counts, because who doesn't love a good word count? 51,600 published words. 22,000 left unpublished. Those are mostly the reviews yet to come. And as we all know, I tend to expand those as we go along. My plan is probably to review the two, I think it was two, Eric Larson issues that came up in the middle of this. Actually, there was one in the middle of Assassination, and then there was one just before Tom McFarlane's final issue that was wrapping up the uh, the Cosmic Power Captain, whatever that was, storyline. And maybe I'll even review the uh, Colleen Doran issue that happened near the end there when Todd was, I don't know, falling behind on deadlines after the bi-weekly uh, run on the assassination. But all those things are yet to come. The biggest review so far was actually for issue 306, Humbugged. That one ran 3,100 words total, surprisingly. Now, if you're looking for something to compare that to, you know, we're looking at a subsite here that will eventually have most likely at least 75,000 words, probably closer to 80 at least if I had a guess by the time I'm all said and done. Pipeline Comics itself has published 946,000 words total and has unbelievably 123,000 unpublished words. Now, in a couple of cases, there's a couple long-form articles, long-form reviews that I've never finished for one reason or another, and each of those runs 7,000 words. Each of those honestly could probably be a subsite on their own instead of a single column, but I think I'd just do a single column eventually. But there's an awful lot of unpublished words and, of course, reviews I'm working on and that kind of stuff. But the McSpidey Chronicles, still a work in progress. We're getting closer every week. I don't know exactly when I'll say I'll have it finished. I imagine at the rate things are going, it'll be in the summer sometime, and then hopefully I'll publicize it a little bit more. It's not getting a ton of hits right now. They, they dribble in here and there, but I'm also not publicizing it that much past like a link on Twitter every time I do a new review. So when I have the entire resource finished, we'll have a party and, and I'll try to promote it in other places as well. So if you're wondering about the McSpidey Chronicles at PipelineComics.com slash McSpidey, that's the story behind it. That's the current status of it. And that is as well uh, the future. For those asking if I'm going to review the adjective list Spider-Man after this, I don't know. I might do, you know, an article per storyline from that. Maybe that makes more sense. I don't know if I need to go issue by issue, but we'll see how I feel once I get past this. And will there be other smaller sites inside Pipeline Comics reviewing things like this? Possibly. There's one other series I reviewed like this for CBR back around the same time that I would like to revisit. Maybe not update quite as much, but let's be honest, I probably will. Uh, That one only ran 10 or 11 issues. That's the all-star Batman and Robin the Boy Wonder, which I thought was really cool. But I'm also the contrarian around here. I read European comics, and I thought Valerian was a great movie. I'll try to make my case at another point for the Batman book. The Valerian movie I've already written about plenty of times. You can go back in the archives and, and see that. And now I'm rambling. 
Again, go to PipelineComics.com for all this fun stuff. You can click on the link for the McSpidey Chronicles there. Get your McSpidey on, all that good stuff. Thank you for listening. I'm Augie Oblique Jr., and I will talk to you again real soon.